how to manage <laughs> your stress and avoid burnout. So just top yeah. level, reducing your vulnerability to burnout. So what does that mean? Like, so are we predisposition to burnout? Are we, what, what makes us vulnerable to it? Because I know there's a lot of people that are like, I, you know, the, what people say, it's like, I feel like I'm burning out. I feel like I'm almost going to burn out. I feel like I'm crashing. Like those are the things I'm hearing. Yeah. So this is the main thing that I actually talk about these days is the main thing that organizations bring me in to mm -hmm. talk about and address. And so in terms of reducing your vulnerability to burnout, it's not just a personal thing because we know that organizational factors, uh, team-related factors, uh, specific work-related factors are actually the primary drivers of burnout. Okay. And burnout by definition is caused by chronic work-related stress. So a lot of people use the word burnout, but mo I would say most people probably don't actually really understand what that word means clinically. So, so fundamentally, it's, it's chronic work-related stress that sets up burnout. There are multiple factors. There's high-level organizational, there's team dynamics, work-related stuff, and then there are individual factors for sure. And I would say that as a society, there are a bunch of factors that are making us much more vulnerable to burnout over the last few years, including right now. But then you also add in things like we know that workloads substantially increased over the pandemic. We also know that there has been the phenomenon of the great resignation, that a yes. lot of sectors, people are working understaffed. And so people are working longer hours, carrying more responsibility. Um, workplaces are more stressed. So those factors are a huge driver. And I feel like it's another layer of the way that the pandemic is forcing us to to reorganize and change the way we see and do things because the old way of doing things won't work under the current circumstances. Yeah. And so... What I work on a lot with people is, for example, boundaries and and even changing the way that they see themselves. There are so many people out there, and, and women in particular, who we see ourselves as being those yes people that we're always there for everybody else. We have mm -hmm. a way of doing things and showing up in the world that is simply not sustainable anymore. And, that, right. and, it, and it shouldn't be, actually, because it's actually a sign of a, of a healthy person who is able to put healthy boundaries and live and work in a way that's sustainable because God created us with limits. Mm -hmm. And and the way that many of us habitually live without putting in healthy limits, that's just not going to work anymore because we're all too depleted. So a lot right. of the conversation is about identifying priorities, identifying values. And this is for people and organizations, right? To really get clear about what is most important and what what are the things that need to be in place to make to make our lives and our work sustainable.